So good afternoon and welcome. Uh, this is a, a big event for us. Uh, we are very much in the middle of planning all of our digital finance function awards at the moment. And we are here to announce the shortlist. Um, but first of all, I do want to make sure that everybody gets a mention, okay? This is um, a process that started three months ago. We have had a huge number of applications from around the world, literally. Um, this was an idea that was born last year. This is the second Digital Finance Function Awards that we've done. Um, and an idea that came out of, you know, we wanted to promote new ways of working. We wanted to promote new talent. We wanted to promote all of the change makers within the accounting and finance field within industry. And um, this was the, the sort of brainchild um, of mine. And, and here we are, second year doing the Digital Finance Function Awards. Um, thank you, first of all, to the partnership that we've got with the ACCA who have helped us um, promote this, um, get judges together and nominations together. And also these things don't happen by themselves. Um, so thank you to our sponsor, Advanced. Um, now this year, thankfully, we are going to be doing this in person. So the ceremony will be live in London on the 16th of June. Um, all of the shortlisters, the judges um, have been invited and we've even extended the invite to the summit speakers. We've got a summit coming up in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, so look, I'm really excited to, to get on with it. And I know that's why you're here. So I am going to get on with it. Um, but I do just want to also thank our judges because our judges have obviously shortlisted everybody and they're right now in the process of, of voting um, against this shortlist. Uh, there are, I think, 12 judges um, and I think we have eight of them um, who have actually put their, their vote in. So uh, we already have a few clear leaders, um, but you know, it's not over yet. And obviously all will be revealed on the night. So <clears throat> first of all, uh, Rising Hero Award. Now this is very much around people who we've seen uh, as part of Gen ZFO and with the community, as well as um, people around us who are trying to promote more efficient ways of working and we actually have an SME category because we th feel that the SMEs are potentially moving a lot faster in this space than maybe the enterprise and the larger companies um, and the shortlist today is, is Jess Harcourt, yay Jess, uh, Becky Glover, yay spoke this morning and Marie Charpenter which um, she's had a fantastic application uh, come in um, no bias there at all, but uh, I really, really liked what I saw there, Marie. Next up, I'll try not to be biased at all, but obviously I'm quite invested in this whole process. So Finance Leader of the Year Award. Um, we have Zoe Cook, a brilliant FD, um, worked in enterprise as well as SME and uh, past speaker for us. Um, Leona Mendez, who um, is in a really interesting company, uh, doing a lot of growth um, work for Rebank. And um, Tanvir Jessamadeen, who I'm sure if you've been part of Gen CFO for a while, you will have seen Tanvir's face. He's everywhere. But he was one of the original supporters of Gen CFO and a real advocate of analytics particularly, but around you know, the digitization of the finance function. Next up, we have International Rising Star in Finance. Um, and like I said, you know, Gen CFO is, is an international audience, okay? We're across the whole of LinkedIn. There are no boundaries there. Um, obviously the physical side of things is focused on, on UK, but we do have ambitions to move out and uh, there'll be more, and more news on that later in the year. But thank you very much to the international applications that we've had. Um, and we've got um, Alexandra Valdez, um, Feliza Alfonso and Silvia Ianita. Um, again, three great people, um, three great applications, and all doing great work in the SME space. So we have a few extra categories this year, um, just to sort of show the growth within the digital 
finance function space. Um, and we've tried to pull out some, some categories that sort of really celebrate people who are doing great stuff in here. Maybe unsung heroes to a lot of people in the accounting and finance space. So resource of the year um, goes to the, the strength in the numbers, the uh, SSF, the Shared Services Forum UK, and the CFO Automation Experience. So all people who are bringing great content to you all the time, focused on you know, either leadership or the shared services side of life or automation and CFOs leading automation. Great resources for people to go and tap in. I think um, you know, Andrew's show, The Strength in the Numbers show, was started long before the pandemic. I think he's up to almost 400 episodes yet. So it's a, it's a real great resource for, for people to look at. Just a, again, no bias there, just wanted to sort of bring to life some of these categories. Also, we've looked at social media of the year. So we use LinkedIn a lot, right? And there's a big debate around whether LinkedIn is, you know, social media or not. But there's a lot of great people out there using social media. And it is a way to connect with new talent, new people, um, Gen Z, definitely, who might be the driving force behind some of this digitization. So we wanted to call out a few people here. We have seen some great work from the AS, ACCA, um, their sectors and communities team, real good use of their brand and the imaging and trying to bring everything to light. Um, the CFO playbook by Soldo, again, some really good leadership interviews there. And uh, CFO 4.0 podcast um, by Hannah Monroe. And again, bringing sort of real good thought leadership um, to us, you know, directly to us as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all free and ready for us to use. And, and it's been a great sort of um, journey to go on with some of these people and see those, those podcasts and those communities develop. So social media of the, the year shortlist. So now we're moving from SMEs into the larger enterprises. And um, I know how, how difficult it can be to make change in larger enterprises. So, you know, these guys really do need um, a pat on the back to be able to do anything in these, in these new spaces within enterprise. Um, so rising hero in finance, we have uh, Michelle Govinsami. Um, Michelle has done a great job actually on the social media side as well, but she's in the rising hero um, section and she has a, um, a, a very good public profile and a blog uh, going brogues which um, we connected a few years ago now um, but now doing great work at Deloitte. We have uh, Josh Il Bidwari he is uh, working at Towers Watson he's an analyst a great analyst um, looking at the application and um, Josh has also been to our, our London community uh, meetup a few times as well. So uh, well, well done, Josh. And we have finally Yusuf Marvi, um, who's working actually in the audit space and developing a product um, for Deloitte in the audit space. So again, maybe a, around creating technology from within larger enterprises rather than just buying it in. So some gr great people there um, that we hope you would join us to celebrate. Then we have the leadership that's behind all this talent, right? And we have a fantastic um, Finance Leader of the Year shortlist here. Um, Duncan Burgess, uh, for CFO from uh, Get. We have James Owen, uh, CFO from Kantar. And we have Herr Claire uh, Osmond Little, uh, who's the, digital, the, the Director of Finance from um, NHS Digital. It's based in, in Wales. Hello, Wales. Um, and again, you know, leadership has to be aware of what's coming from when it comes to the digital finance function, and they need to be inspired enough to go and make a change and create a vision and invest time and money into this change. So we really wanted to call those people out um, who are shaping uh, the teams of today, uh, not tomorrow, but shaping the teams of today. Um, and then obviously the, the teams that have really made a difference. Um, now we have uh, three great teams here. We have Johnson Maffey, um, who's uh, in part led by Malcolm Finn. Malcolm's named here because of the application, um, but it's very much the whole Johnson Maffey team. 
Mighty, um, led by Sheila. Sheila's been part of our community again for a really long time, and it's great to see this application come through really sort of difficult times over the last few years um, for many of these companies. And, um, and, and Roche, um, for, led by Cedric. So we have, you know, again, a digital transformation program happening there, touching lots of different people and um, really, really hard yards earn, I think, um, on the Roche side with this innovation sort of approach that they brought into finance. So again, really, really interesting um, and very worthy shortlisters. And then we expand this out to international. So we have um, Bernd Stangle, uh, the CFO from Alcatel, um, again, nominated uh, for a digital transformation. Um, we have Sindar uh, Ia, who um, is in Singapore, but nominated by uh, HSBC UK. And um, again, we have Cedric who again has been leading very much this innovation approach um, within Roche and uh, you know, not only bringing in capability, but no doubt changing hearts and minds when it comes to what we do and how we create products and how we can actually deliver digital um, change, digital transformation from an accounting and finance point of view. So again, back to some of these other categories that we brought in for this year, again, just to sort of highlight the real richness of this, uh, this industry now, this whole ecosystem. Um, so learning event of the year, we have the Global Excel Summit, um, very much called that out as a sort of practitioner led summit. Um, and yes, it's a professional summit, but it was virtual, it was practitioner led, and uh, it was very much around peer learning. And, and that really chimes with Gen CFO as a way of working. Um, then we have the, uh, the summit, uh, 2021 data and people from the Open Data Institute. Now, not many people would have come across the Open Data Institute, but they've been doing some great work to just try and educate people in terms of the basics of data ethics, data literacy, the opportunity with data. Um, great organization founded by Tim Berners-Lee and, and led by Louise Burke, who is uh, a qualified accountant. Um, but don't hold that against them. And finally, um, learning events of the year, really good digital decoded series from the AAT. Um, and again, you know, it's going to be interesting to see where this change comes from. Is it going to come from new people, you know, coming in and learning? Or is it going to come from, you know, people who have already been in the profession for, for 15, 20 years who might have the budget to make that change? And I think digital decoded series was great in that it had, a, um, a, a stream for sort of practice and accountants and a stream for industry. And there were three sessions each that really tried to break down uh, the, the, the trends and the subjects so that people can go and action it. Um, so re a really good learning event, you know, to a group of people that are gonna be in the profession for a very long time. And then we have a uh, training provider of the year. So yeah, we're still learning skills. You know, I think actually we're still learning concepts and opportunities and all the rest of it, but you, we definitely need skills. And learning provider of the year shortlist um, goes to uh, Full Stack Modeler, um, which is focused on sort of Excel and advanced Excel. And, you know, I know I sometimes put some controversial things out there about Excel, but the reality is we, we, we have a lot to learn um, in Excel, and it, I feel that it is the sort of the doorway through to greater things if you do want to go on that advanced Excel journey. So well done to Full Stack Modeler and the team there. The Finance Business Partnering Academy, um, led by Andy Lonnan, who's uh, an a uh, ACCA member. Um, we talk a lot about finance business partnering, um, and we need that skill set. Um, whether you talk to digital people, whether you talk to business people, there's no point doing analytics, let's say, if we don't know how to communicate it. There's no point doing analytics if we don't know how to interpret the data and visualize it. Um, so Andy's really covering off this skill set under her nine C's of how to go and be a great business partner. And we didn't want to leave that out because this isn't just about getting techie. This is about engaging with the business. Um, and also the AP Association, um, led by Jamie Radford, 
uh, Jamie is again really going deep in that silo, that pillar of AP, um, and bringing it to life and training people and you know helping make change and celebrate. I think the other week they had an, an AP Appreciation Week. You know, I, I would have loved that when I started out in AP probably 30 years ago. Um, but again, they are they are helping you know, progress that process in AP. And there's a huge amount of productivity gain and efficiency gain that can be brought about with the digitization of AP. And then I think this is finally, because um, we're running up to time, <clears throat> um, but we have the Influential Woman of the Year Award. And now this was a sort of late announcement for us and because we started the process of the Digital Finance Function Awards long before International Women's Week. But we wanted um, to absolutely have uh, a celebration of women leadership within accounting and finance. And I'm really pleased that to say that Sarah Jane and Selena have all had applications put in and they've all confirmed their place on this list. And they all understand the need for the digitization of um, the, you know, the finance function in the future. Um, Sarah has joined the AAT as CEO. She is um, a fairly new within role, um, but I'm already hearing some uh, amazing things about, you know, the vision and the pace that's being set um, for a, a new AAT. Um, Jane Hesmanall, she has been doing some amazing work, not just within, you know, Microsoft and the whole Microsoft portfolio of products, no doubt, being used by her team. But on the diversity side and, you know, being inclusive uh, at work and, you know, we felt that that's obviously as important um, in our workplace now as, as it's ever been. Um, so this isn't just about the digitization side of, of things, even though I, I know from talking to Jane, interviewing Jane before that, you know, her team's very much leading um, the, the digitization with Microsoft products there. And then um, Selena Butterfield, who is from Very Group and talking at our summit um, very soon as well, who's been making significant change, you know, a real champion of, of, of digital change from, um, from a capability point of view within accounting and finance at, at the Very Group, um, the retailer. So um, three, again, fantastic shortlisters um, for Influential Woman of the Year. So look, that wraps it up um that's the short list it's been a long process to get there i have to say it's only taken 15 20 minutes to go through but there's been a huge amount of work put in and i really want to finally say thank you to my team so this doesn't happen without a huge amount of work um obviously I, I've, I've called out our partners and our sponsors but um i'd just like to personally thank sophie ryan elliot and Olivia, who are working hard on this as well as the summit, um, because you know without our team pulling together, none of this would happen. And uh, I'm really looking forward to celebrating on the night on the 16th with them and with all the shortlisters and their plus ones and more of the community um, in London. So um, that's it from me. Have a great day. I hope you're excited. Tell the world if you've been shortlisted. Um, it's a real celebration uh, for you. You're all winners. Uh, even if you don't get that first place on the night, being shortlisted in my eyes is definitely winning uh, in the race for the digital finance function. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.